Welcome to the Nail, I'm Ashley. It is Friday, my dudes. It is the last day of the week for the first week of the year. Congratulations, we all survived this one time. We all survived. We know that PlayStation potentially has a ton of exclusive titles set for 2018, but they may be backpedaling on a few of those already, possibly. A new trailer for the PS4 Pro released by PlayStation Korea is raising some eyebrows because in its rundown of games, including several notable ones for the coming year, like Detroit Become Human, God of War, Shadow of the Colossus, Monster Hunter World, some games like Days Gone and Spider-Man are completely absent, even though those are also slated for this year. Uh, while that doesn't necessarily mean anything firm, last year people got similarly excited when God of War footage was included in the PlayStation 2017 trailers. It is at least a tiny bit curious, especially because for Spider-Man, it's one of those tentpole games that they're leaning so heavily on elsewhere. However, this is a marketing trailer for the PS4 Pro and it's likely Sony just maybe you wanted to focus on titles slated for sure for the first half of the year? We can hope, because I definitely would love to play Spider-Man this year. Speaking of PlayStation titles, God of War just got a load of details courtesy of being Game Informer's February cover story. Some gamers are starting to get their hands on the digital issues, so a few preliminary details are starting to drip out. For starters, nobody is willing to say anything other than early 2018 for the game's release date, so still nothing firm there. There's also some interesting gameplay information. There's no longer a jump button, for instance, and combat's gonna be a lot less chaotic in this game than in the past. Uh, on top of that, the game will feature a crafting system of some kind, plus you'll be able to upgrade skills, armor, and weapons. In addition to that, director Corey Barlog also talked a little bit about what might come next for the franchise, like new gods to kill. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta work. You gotta have gods to kill, right? gonna run out maybe, I don't know. He told Game Informer, moving on, the next mythological belief system he interacts with became the Norse era of God of War, but we may end up going on to the Egyptian era and the Mayan era and so on and so forth. So just think of all the religions he can kill. Civilization VI is getting its rise and fall update next month, and with it, they just announced that the first Native American, well, North Native American, that is, group. The Cree is coming to the game. Like any civilization added to the game, the Cree will bring new unique traits, abilities, and tile improvements, and they're led by real life figure Chief Poundmaker, who works to make peace between the Canadian government and the First Nations. But unfortunately, modern day Poundmaker Cree Nation headman Milton Tutusis has a problem with the inclusion in the game because 2K didn't approach the community about the portrayal. Tutusis said, it perpetuates this myth that first First Nations had similar values that the colonial culture has, and that is one of conquering other peoples and accessing their land. That is totally not in concert with our traditional ways and worldview. The Poundmaker Cree Nation will consult with elders before getting in touch with 2K Games. Tatusis says, in the end, he hopes the game does more to help than harm their cause. Do we have more hints that a Burnout Paradise remaster is on the way? That may be the case according to yet another listing for the game, this time from a Japanese listing as spotted by Gematsu. Similar to the Brazilian listing that popped up in December, this one also has the game pegged for a March release, March 16th to be exact. This could be the work of some uh, erroneous retailers, so some incorrect information they're getting, but it does seem odd to have this show up in a couple of different territories so close to one another, so we'll see if EA has anything to announce anytime soon. If it's supposed to come out in March, it's kinda gotta be soon. And speaking of EA, in case there was any doubt, it doesn't look like they're going to be reviving the uh, Dead Space IP anytime soon, so don't get your hopes up. That word comes from former Dead Space art director Ian Millam, who recently showed up in a Reddit thread to answer questions for fans. When asked if there was any chance of EA selling off the IP and therefore someone else getting their hands on it and maybe doing something with it, Millam said, IP is where all the money is and EA spent hundreds of millions on Dead Space over the years, so no, they wouldn't let it go for cheap. And then when asked about whether or not EA might consider licensing it out to someone else, he replied, I've never heard of a publisher licensing IP as, say, a book or a movie IP owner does. The thing is, it would have to be another publisher that does the licensing, otherwise it would be a standard dev deal. Which makes sense, So, m but maybe they could license it to a studio? I don't know, we'll see. But anyway, Dead Space? Yeah, still super dead for the time being, unfortunately. 
Intel has issued patches to deal with two widely reported security flaws, but how's that affecting their ship's performance? Well, kind of a mixed bag. Your mileage may vary. The YouTube channel Hardware Unboxed benchmarked a couple various Intel chips after installing the fixes to the infamous Spectre and Meltdown exploits and found that the differences when it comes to game performance were not that significant, so that's pretty good. On the other hand, Dark Side of Gaming did its own tests on an Intel i7 4930K with a bunch of AAA games and got mixed results. While it saw a noticeable performance hit in Assassin's Creed Origins, there were some other games like Need for Speed Payback and Battlegrounds that only saw small performance decreases, so it may vary game to game. Ditto for Battlefront 2, Destiny 2, Evil Within 2. So we'll have to wait and see which games individually take performance hits, but regardless, please install the patches to be safe. It's important. It's official, no new Game of Thrones this year. Sorry, guys, we kind of knew this was coming, I feel like, but it's official. HBO confirmed that the show won't return for its final season until 2019. I Look, there have been reports last year that the showrunners were gonna take some extra time to work on the show's final episodes to get them right. The season we just had before, they couldn't even start filming until they had snow on the ground, so we didn't come out till June. It was like this whole big thing. The final season is gonna consist of just six episodes, but each one is expected to be the length of a full movie. So they do have their work cut out for them. We don't know when exactly in 2019 we'll be getting the final season. Some are speculating it's gonna release in the spring, but again, they may have to deal with the snow or maybe they just need the extra time for post. In the meantime, uh, maybe George R. R. Martin will release the latest book in the series to keep us all company. What are the chances? The legendary cartoon series starring Yako Waka One Dot is coming to Hulu, which has ordered two seasons, and Steven Spielberg himself will return as executive producer. The show originally debuted way back in 1993, was much loved, won eight daytime Emmys, it wrapped up in 1998 and launched a number of spin-offs. Speaking of which, if you're wondering, Pinky and the Brain will be coming back too. The deal with Hulu also includes the full library of Animaniacs and Tiny Toon Adventures episodes, which is awesome. Those are available now, and then new Animaniacs episodes will release in 2020. Yeah, it's gonna be a little while, but it's coming. Bad news, Rick and Morty fans, it is also gonna be a way for you guys for season four. A writer on the show said there's been no work done on a script for the new season and we might not see it until next year. In an interview with the Detroit Cast podcast, writer producer Ryan Ridley said, as far as I know, no one's working on the show and I'm certainly not, so I don't know what's going on. I haven't heard anything. He added that he'd be surprised if season four released anytime sooner than late 2019. Oh well, on the bright side, I don't know, maybe this will give McDonald's plenty of time to make more Szechuan sauce for everyone who wants it. What are the chances? No. It's no surprise that Apple makes a lot of money, like a lot, especially through the App Store, and that was very, very true this holiday season. The tech giant said the App Store made almost $900 million in just seven days starting on Christmas Eve, which is a new record for the company, needless to say. And one of the apps leading the way was, believe it or not, none other than Pokemon Go, which has had a little bit of a comeback recently thanks to new AR features. If you're wondering, the App Store has made more than $86 billion since it launched way back in July of 2008. So if you were wondering if it's gonna go away anytime soon, uh, maybe App Store is not really working out for Apple. No, it is. It absolutely is. All right, that is the last roundup for this week. Let us know what you think of all these stories in the comments down below to make sure you get news from every corner of the internet every weekday. Like this video. If you're new to this channel, subscribe to The Note and we will bring you so many other newses. So many. The Animaniacs are back. The legendary cartoon series starring Yakko. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Includes the full library of Animaniacs and Tiny Toons Ad is it Tiny Toon or Tiny Toons? Tiny Toon, Tiny Toon Adventures. Tiny Toon Adventures. I've said that wrong my entire life, I think.